All right, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. And what we'll do is get the mic to you and let the uh, let you ask your question. Now, let me say this to you. Once your question is asked, we ask you, if you would, to allow us time to go in the Bible and answer your question. Now, if there be any fighters in the house, Ella Murray is not going to go back and forth with you. I don't have to. You know, what I'll do is give you Bible, let you read the chapter, let you read the verse, and we proceed on. You know, I can't argue with nobody about what the Bible said. You know, whatever the Bible, look here, it is what it is. Whatever the Bible said, it say that. So I didn't write it. I'm here only to teach what's already written. It's not in our power to add or to take away, but simply certify. My God, man, certify according to what's already written. Show you what's in the book. All right? Any questions, feel free to raise your hand. My sister right here in the front. Let's get her first, and we'll get the brother in the back there. I have two questions. The first question concerns women wearing something covering their head. And I know that the scriptures say that it's an abomination to God if women pray without something on their head. But do they have to wear something on their head all the time if they're out in public? That's very good question. That's a very good question, sister. All right. First Corinthians chapter 11. All right. You, you want to go ahead and ask your second question? Yeah, too? my go second ahead. question pertains to devotionals. I've been a big devotional person and I've gotten my spiritual needs met that way, gotten closer to God that way. The latest one that I'm reading is strictly scripture, nothing else but scripture and prayer. And that's it. But my question is, because I've heard certain people or ministers say that's wrong and I don't want to do anything displeasing to the Lord. So those are my two questions. OK, let me let me we'll go back to the first question. But when you say devotional, I mean, you just basically reading, just reading something and just praying. When, what you're reading, is it like you're reading scripture, reading scripture? Yeah. And you pray. Right. And so a preacher says something was wrong with that. Mm, I'm just going to say it like I've heard it. My second husband that I'm no longer with, when I mentioned a devotional, he said, no, you, you don't need that. And I've heard it said from first church when I used to go there, you don't do no devotionals. So that's what I'm basing it off of. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure I'm understanding you when you say devotional. You're talking about basically reading scripture and praying. And they're saying that there's something wrong with that. No, so there's something wrong with them. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with you praying and, and, and reading the scripture. There's something wrong with them if they see a problem with that because the scriptures support you and what you're doing. I can show you Bible where the Bible said they searched the scriptures daily. That's what they did. So for anyone, preacher, husband, brother, sister, it doesn't matter to have a problem with you praying, searching the scripture, studying the word. It's nothing wrong with you. It's something wrong with them. And I know a lot of devotionals, they do have comments mm -hmm. about certain scriptures. And if there's anything there that I know is wrong, I just don't pay no attention to that part, if you know what I mean. Well, even in some of your Bibles, you can read the scripture and on the side of the scripture, they'll try to give you an interpretation of it. Right, right. Don't pay that no mind. You simply read the scripture. So for anybody to say there's a problem for you to read the scripture, Acts 17, so I'm start at verse 10. Acts 17. And we're going to start reading at verse number 10. Let me go ahead and get answer this one first. Okay. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you reading the scripture or certainly not praying, you know, but not even reading the scripture uh, either. Acts 17, breaks. Let's start around about verse 10. What did it say, sir? And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. The brethren sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. Who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. The Bible said they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. These were more noble 
than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They received the word with all readiness of mind. And searched the scriptures daily. This is what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to search the scriptures daily. Read the scripture. Look here. I, I, I have... I have men and women, brothers and sisters around the world call me and ask me for scriptures to read just for comfort. And I'll point them to scripture, whether it's a male or female. What better comfort to get than comfort from the word of God? That's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, so I don't know, you know, where they're coming from. You know, this sounds like to me some of these homemade, man-made rules that you can't read out of the Bible, Ella Murray will always encourage you to study, always encourage you to pray. Last verse again, Brace said what? These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They received the word with all readiness of mind. And searched the scriptures daily. Searched the scriptures daily. Whether those things were so. Whether those things were so. So then Rome to certain the scriptures and the Bible teaches we ought to always pray. Always pray. So, sister, don't pay that no mind. Okay. For as your head covering is concerned, she's asking about head covering. Is it something that must be done all the time? For as the uh, female is concerned, First Corinthians chapter eleven, and we're gonna start reading. Brace it round about verse number three. First Corinthians eleven and at verse three. What did it say, son? But I will have you know. I have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. Head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Head of Christ is God. I, I love that right there, y'all. You know, I don't want to just run over that because that's some good Bible order right there. Read that at th three again. Braces said what? But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Head of every man, every man is Christ. Who is Christ? He's God's son. He's the son of God and he's the head of every man, meaning he's over every man. He's Lord of every man. Do you understand? What did the Bible say, son? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. The man is over the woman. That's why Abraham, his wife, Sarah, called him Lord. Yes, Do you understand? Because he indeed was her Lord. He's over her. That's God's Bible order that God put in place himself. Not Ella Murray's doing. This is the word of God. Bible said what? And the head of Christ is God. Head of Christ. You see, even our Lord got a head. Don't read over that. Even our Lord. You see, my Lord, Jesus Christ, which is the son of the father, he got a head likewise. Who is, who is his head? His father is his head. Read that last verse again. Say what? But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Head of Christ is God. Head of the son is the father. In other words, what did it say? Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered. Every man. Every male. Every man. Having his head what? Covered. Covered. Dishonoreth his head. When a man pray, his head is not to be covered. When he pray, his head is to be uncovered. Bible said what, Brace? But every woman that prayeth or prophesy. Every woman that walk outside. That prayeth or prophesy. Every woman that go to Walmart. That prayeth or prophesy. Every woman that see a man. That prayeth or prophesy. Every woman. <laughs> Listen to me, brothers and sisters. <laughs> the Bible is very plain. It said, pray and prophesy. Now, men come along behind scriptures like this and they have added to it. They've said, at all times. Sister, I've heard it. At all times. Or anytime you're in the presence of a man. They say, your head, I'd have heard all this stuff. Sister, when I left the organization that you left. Yes, sir. When they heard my teaching, when the leader heard my teaching that I'm teaching right now, that the Bible is plain and specific. It said when she pray and when she prophesy. After he heard my teaching, I visited. This has been probably 15 years ago. I visited a meeting they was having in Mobile, Alabama. They was at some type of facility and I just walked in. You're by myself, just walk in. Uh, when he saw me come in, his message shifted. 
And it became what I'm talking about now. And he started telling the people, basically, I will cause women to be damned and go to hell. Well, basically what he was saying was, if I didn't teach what he taught, because I'm teaching what the scripture said. The scripture said when she pray or prophesy, all these other things that he added concerning the presence of a man or when she's out in public. And this was the argument. I dealt with this heavy back in the day. This was the argument. He said, well, her head ought to be covered at all times because she never know when she's going to have to pray. Okay. But listen, let me show you something. Sister, we got sister from Mobile, son from Mobile who keep their heads covered at all times. No problem. I don't have an issue with that. But if another sister don't keep it hit, her head covered at all times, you can't condemn her. That's right. You I can't agree. condemn her. The only way you can condemn her if she's praying or prophesying with it uncovered. That scripture there, all this other stuff, man added that. They added that. The Bible is very plain when she pray and when she prophesy. So he, he started coming at me during that service that I caused women to be damned and go to hell, you know, because basically I wasn't teaching what he was teaching. Well, never mind what you teach. I'm talking what the Bible said. The Bible speaks plain when she pray and when she prophesy. When they put forth the argument and said, well, you never know when she's going to have to pray. So just in case she's in a situation where she needs to pray, she needs to have it covered. Well, I countered that. I said, if you're going to teach that, then teach men to never cover theirs. Teach a man, he can't wear no hat. Don't put no hat on because you never know when you have to pray. That's right. It can't be one-sided now. So if you're going to teach the women that they must have it covered, and you're going to teach that for doctrine, that they must have it covered at all times, then you also got to teach men never wear a hat. But the ones who were telling the women that, they had their hat slanted to the side, you know, walking around like cool Modi or somebody. Do you understand? I understand. Oh, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. You, you know, so that's what they, but they taught the women all times, all times, because you never know when you're going to have to pray. Well, if a sister is out, and she in a situation where she needs to pray, she must have a covering. If she if she in a situation she got to pray, take your covering out and cover your head. Exactly. And pray. Okay. Take your, your covering out, cover your head and pray. Just like me. Earlier today, some of y'all saw me in here, I had a hat on. I wasn't praying. When I get ready to pray, that's coming off. Now, as a rule in the house of God, because the Bible calls the house of God a house of prayer. As a rule for us, the women is concerned in the house of prayer, where prayer should be continually going on. Yes, cover your head, sister. Yes, cover your head. But out in public, going to Walmart, so well, I may get in a situation I got to pray, then take your covering out and cover your head. That's what I do at home. That's when right. it's time to pray over my food, I go get my That's right. All that stuff, Sister Matthew 15 and 8. Let me show you. Let me show you what happened here. Matthew chapter 15 and that verse 8. Let me show you exactly what is taking place with all this type of teaching that you can't read. Man added this stuff. Matthew 15 and 8 said, what? This people draw nigh to me with their mouth. Bible said this people draw nigh to me with their mouth. And honor me with their lips. They honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Their what? Their heart. Their heart is far from me. What are they doing, Bracey? But in vain they do worship me. In vain they do worship me. Doing what? Teaching for doctrines. Oh. Teaching for what? Teaching for doctrines. Teaching for what? For doctrines. They teaching for a doctrine. The commandments of men. They teaching it like it's God's doctrine. But in reality, that's a man's commandment. Jesus said, in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of a man. That's all that is, sister's commandment of a man. 
The Lord's commandment is when you pray and when you prophesy. All right. Okay. I got one more question. I forgot. No problem. Um, concerning watching Christian movies, is mm -hmm. there anything wrong with that? Because I've heard that teaching too. When you say Christian movies, I'm talking about like, uh, Christians, Christian movies, like they're depicting the life of Paul or depicting the life of John or, uh, the story of Jesus Christ's life. And it's all about the new Testament. And I here's where you can get some trouble at now for us depicting the life of Paul, Peter, no problem. But when you start mocking Jesus, you, you don't want to go there. You don't, you don't want to get into mocking Jesus. You know, I, I, for as that type of stuff is concerned, no, no. But for as, you know, I've, I, I've never watched any. But for as Bible stories depicting the life of Paul, you know, showing the things that Paul did, I wouldn't try to condemn that like that. You know, it, me, it's too much in the Bible to preach than to try to condemn somebody, you know, but basically what, what it boils down to, we're, we're, we're reading the life of Paul and someone basically is depicting his life. I wouldn't try to condemn nothing like that. But when it gets into, you know, you don't want to get into this stuff where they start mocking Jesus. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't watch. I, I, I would have no interest in that kind of stuff. No interest, you know, and I can get scripture you know, where it talks uh, about that, you know, he's not mocked, you know, don't get into mocking Jesus. But for as someone just want to show you the life and whatnot of, of Paul, Peter, what I, I, I wouldn't even bother that, you know, but Jesus, be careful with that. I wouldn't go there. Okay. All right. Because they have a, like a, they had a biblical series and they said it was strictly based on the scriptures mm -hmm. on all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they went into acts, uh, people being filled with the Holy Spirit in the upper room. I mean, they did it all. Mm -hmm. and it was strictly based on the scriptures. And when I read it, you know, I had my Bible out and I didn't see anything where they went off base. So basically they were just more or less demonstrating what they've read. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to condemn nothing like that. I mean, you know, <laughs> You know, if, if it was a if, if something if it was sin, something came to mind, I would tell you, you know, the only thing that comes to my mind is, you know, you don't want to mock Jesus. You know, don't 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 go there, you know, but for as them depicting the life of the apostles and, you know, I've heard of the stories, Old Testament stories, Moses right. and the stuff that he went through and, you know, parting of the Red Sea and and all that stuff that you read from Scripture, you know. I wouldn't try to condemn nothing like that, you know. Listen, I, I'm like this. It's so much in the Bible to preach until we don't have to just make up stuff to try to condemn. It's too much in here. You know, let's just teach what's written. And if someone is depicting a life or Bible stories or whatever they have done, I ain't got time to try to condemn that. The only problem I got is when you start mocking Jesus. That would be a problem. And when you say, can you elaborate on what you mean by mocking Jesus? The things that Jesus went through on our behalf, I wouldn't make mockery of that. I wouldn't I wouldn't be up on a cross in our neighborhood where I live. Oh, I see what you mean. In other words, imitating. Absolutely. OK. OK. Don't, don't mock Jesus. Listen, in our neighborhood. You've seen it, haven't you? My wife, I'm talking, this is this is five less than five minutes from my house. A church do this stuff every year. I've been to churches and I was a part of it. You was. You and, was, brother. And, and I oh, he came from a big church that did it. <laughs> I just thought about that. Deacon Wiley? Yes, sir. He came from a big church. Listen, they would rent, what is it, the big Coliseum? The Mitchell Center in Mobile. 60000 that's what it costs to put it on. He came from a church that did this stuff every year, spend 60 grand is what he's saying to put this thing on. And 
you know, my, my thing is like down from my house, this church do this stuff every year. They have some guy up on the cross. Yeah. Our church did it. Did the whole thing. Had him bleeding, had the fake blood, had him walking down the aisles, getting whipped by the soldiers a whole nine yards. No, no. Now you're getting into mockery. Okay. Don't go there. Don't okay. go there. Don't look at tell me all about Paul, all about Peter. <laughs> but when you start mocking, imitating Jesus, let me tell you something. That wasn't no game, man. What Jesus went through on our behalf, let me tell you something. That is not to be mocked. Just thank God that he allowed his son to go through that on our behalf. God is not mocked. Don't mock, don't mock, don't mock, don't mock him at all. Do you understand? I understand. All right. Thank you so God much. Bless you, God sister. bless you. All right. All right. Let, let, let's go ahead. We're up front. Don't get my sister here then, brother. We're coming to you. We're coming to you, my brother. I just want to ask what you we they they can't hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. okay, I'm sorry. Um, I I find that when when I got saved in '82, young in my 20s, um, I enjoy watching those the old uh, movies of Paul and Peter. Then I did regular shows, and it was it what it did for me because you know sometimes when you first get saved, it's kind of hard to understand the Bible. So what it did for me was like it opened it up when I actually saw the movie of I would get the Bible. It became get, more clear to it you. It became more clear to me right. so much so that the holiness church that I was in, the, uh, the saints would say that I thought I was self-righteous, but it wasn't that. It was like God was opening my eyes to how I, I needed to walk in his righteousness, you know, in his holiness. You know, and the head covering. They didn't wear head covering, but for some reason, I, when I read that First Corinthians eleven, I knew to wear head covering when I was praying and prophesying. When I went to work, I didn't have my head covered. Right. God revealed all this to me at a young age. So watching those movies back then, it was like it it opened up the Bible for me, and that's how I learned how to walk even more with with the Lord. You know, so. Thank God for you, Sister Robinson. Thank God for you. Let me add to this. You can head to the back with my brother back there. Let me add to this. Here's, here's the problem even when preachers teach this thing going back to head cover. There's so many sisters out who if they see, just see if they, they say they see my wife or you, just say at Walmart without their head covered. They judge them and condemn them. They judge them and condemn them because of the way they've been taught, yeah. the way they've been taught. I remember years ago, and I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a yield to my brother, but I remember years ago, we was in Mobile, Alabama. This was back in the day when I was, you know, in with that group, and Minister Williams, the reader. <laughs> we was together. We was out somewhere together, and. There was an old elder, much older than us, who would fellowship with us whenever Gino would come to Mobile. And his name was Donald Davis. And uh, Donald Davis would come around and fellowship. And Donald would have a short sleeve shirt on. That was wrong. Oh, 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 back in the day it was wrong. Now look, they do it now. Oh, it's all right now. Oh, they do it now, you know. But back in the day, that was a no-no. Now, he couldn't read it nowhere. But I'm going to show you what Minister Williams did, what he said to me. After Donald Davis left from our presence, Williams said to me, he said, did you see Donald Davis? I said, yeah. He said, man, he had on a short sleeve shirt. Did you see that? And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, what's wrong with that? But, but Williams responded like that because of the way he had been taught. I knew better. I knew better than that. Man, you couldn't read a short sleeve shirt in the Bible to save your life. That's Gino's teaching. But because of the way they'd been taught, they was judging and condemning others who was not abiding by the rules of their organization. And it goes back to the leader. If you're going to set a rule as a pastor, you need to let your congregation know this is your rule. 
and it's not doctrine. There's a difference between rules and doctrine. That's di Look, I could set a rule in the Mobile Temple if I'm led by God to do so. I can set a rule, but I got to teach them properly. This is our rule now. This is not Bible doctrine. So if you go out and see another congregation not abiding by this rule, you can't judge them. Remember the Bible said, obey them that have the rule over you. Over you. Do you understand? So the ones that I'm leading that I have the rule over, if we set a rule, then they are to abide by that rule. But I got to properly teach them and let them know this is not Bible doctrine. Praise God. Praise God. You know what Paul said? Paul said it this way on no more than one occasion. I can get something correct to what Paul said. I speak according to the occasion. In other words, that was an occasion. That was something taking place that caused Paul to say what he was saying. So in Mobile, of those around the country who follow us, I, if the Lord lead me to set a rule, I let them know this is our rule then they should abide by it. Real fast, and we get to my brother. The Bible said there's different administrations, but the same Lord. One administration may do things this way. Another administration may do things this way. As long as it's not out of line with Scripture, you can't condemn either. Let me show you. We start service tonight. We'll start six o'clock. We'll be in prayer from six to about 615. We start service with prayer. We let everybody know. I have the brothers conduct the service to let the, let the people know they can kneel on their knees or sit, whichever is comfortable. But we're going to pray 15 minutes before the actual service start. Well, you go to another congregation, you go to Bishop Ryan in Atlanta. They may not start like that. Somebody may open up with a song. And they just start serving open service with a song. And then Elder Render, a lot of times, will stand and lead everybody in a prayer. Well, Mobile can't go there and say, hey, hey, man. Bishop, didn't even, they didn't even pray for 15 minutes. What's wrong with them? That's the way our administration do things. You can't condemn them because the Bible said men are always pray. So you can't condemn what we're saying, what we're doing. But then the Bible also said, come before his presence with singing. So it's different administrations just doing things differently. It's all scriptural. It's all scriptural. I can go on and on, but I don't want to, you know, this is Q&A. But let, I can, let me just inject one more. Okay. <laughs> I got you, brother. Look here. I'm going to give you my time as no, you want no, for no, your patience. No, but let me show you something. Let me show you something. The one cup that Gino teach. The same thing applies. And, and, and I was in the temple of the season. Um, Bring it right real fast. Uh-huh. Never. Uh, 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 say that again. I said, I was in the temple in Houston for over a year. Uh huh. Never had communion, and there is something wrong with that. How, how many? How long you were there? Over a year. And y'all never had communion? Never, never. Hey, hey, sister, I was with him for twelve years. We never, never had. And there's something wrong with that because that never, is not never. what the Lord Jesus told us to do. Did he not say do this in remembrance of me? As often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. But let me show you something. Let me show you something. Think about this. Communion represents the body and blood of the Son of God. Think about it. If a man don't believe in the Son of God, why would he do that? <laughs> Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Thank I'm God. out of that. <laughs> Thank God for your deliverance, sister. Yeah. Why would he do it? Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, 
The Bible said, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. We do this until the Son of God return. If a man don't believe in the Son of God, he don't believe in the Son of God, that's the one that's, that's going to come back. Because Geno's going to say this stuff. He said, that's God the Father coming back. That's his doctrine. So why would you do something to commemorate the Son of God if you truly, in, in heart, don't believe in it? Think about it. Two and two is four. And four and four is eight. <laughs> Take it to my brother in the back. But, but, but real fast, I, look here. <laughs> look here. Look at that. Hey, brother, I, I'm, I'm not going to interrupt you when you start talking. Let me show you something. I mentioned the one cup. The same thing applies. If Gino wish to serve his congregation out of one cup, and when I mean one cup, I mean everybody putting their mouth, lips, on the same cup, go ahead. But you can't condemn others who don't do it that way. Okay. Okay. You can't do that. Listen, he stressed, well, the Bible said one cup, one cup. They all drank of it. Show sure did. Mark's on. 1422. And then I want Luke 22, 17. Let me show you how easy it is to expose this foolishness. Now, it's going back to teaching for doctrine, the commandments of men. Now, watch Mark 14, chapter 14, Brace, start at verse 22. What did it say, Brace? And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed. He took bread and blessed. And break it and gave, to, and gave to them. And gave to them. And said, take eat. Take eat. This is my body. Read it. And he took the cup. He took the cup. The cup. Jen is often said one cup. He took the cup, and what did he do? And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. He gave it to them. It, the one cup, to them. And what happened? And they all drank of it. They all drank of it. In other words, they all drank of what was in that one cup. Did it say they all put their lips on the same cup? It never said that. Now let me show it to you. They all drank of it. Now, let me show you Luke's account. Luke twenty two seventeen. 17. Watch this. Luke twenty two seventeen. 17. What did it say, Brace? And he took the cup and gave thanks and said. This is the same thing Mark said. He took the cup and gave thanks and said what? Take this. Take this. And divide it. Hold. Hold now. Divide it. But we're still dealing with the one cup. So we're going to take the one cup and divide the one cup. Now, Janice can't come along and put a pattern on how to divide and say, well, y'all got to divide it the way I say divide. And I say, I drink, give it to y'all, y'all drink. That's the way we got to divide. No, you teach that to your congregation. That's the way y'all going to divide. I could take that same cup after blessing that cup, take that cup and divide that cup. And everybody's still drinking of what was in that cup. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. But Jen has taught it in a way whereby churches who didn't even, they weren't comfortable with that, but they started adjusting because of Gino. Let me tell you something. I don't bit more care what Gino Jenny said than I care about what a cat walking the street said. And I mean that. I only care about what's written in that Bible. Look here. I've told them over the air. Stop letting Gino Jennings run your church, run y'all's church, because people who even don't even believe in him started adjusting because of the stuff he was saying. Not here. Not here. The only thing I'm concerned about is what's written in the Bible. 2217 again said what, race? And he took the cup and gave thanks. He took the cup and gave thanks. And said, take this and divide it among yourselves. We take that cup. After blessing the cup, we take the cup. And we divide it. I divide it by pouring it into separate vessels. Somebody said, well, no, it said they all drank of it. Everything that I poured out of came out of it. We all drinking of it. We're simply dividing it like the Bible said. Read it, son. Verse 17, read it. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. All right, all right. Just want 
it, it's so many things that he has taught and didn't properly teach. And the members walk out condemning others who don't do things just like they do it. Right. And let me tell you, Gino and First Church is not our measuring stick. Here's our measuring stick right here. All right, my brother, it's yours. All right, all right. Thank God for you. What's your name, brother? Uh, Robert Reeves. Robert Reeves. Thank God for you yes, being sir. here, brother. Yes, sir. Are yeah. you a minister? Uh, a deacon. Deacon. Yeah. Man, yeah, it's nice yeah. to meet you, brother. Yes. You from yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. From yeah, Dade County. <laughs> All right. Dade All Brown right. County. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I talked with you back in February. You know, I was asking. Uh, you know, because I know that. Yeah, you the only one that I know that teach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. In the name of Jesus. To God be the glory, brother. Just like it is. And, and I used to always, you know, like, oh, I can't be the only one. <laughs> I can't be the only one. Because uh -huh. everywhere on the radio, on the TV, as soon as they say Jesus is God, that just kicks me in the gut. Yes. And, yes. and, and I just, you know, never believed that when I was of the world, Never believed Jesus was God because the word simply said he sent. Sent. And, and I drove up believing that he sent. And when I got the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and I get in the church and I hear it, I, I, they, I, they sound like they literally think Jesus is God. Uh huh. And then it turned out they did. And, right. You know, so right. I, I, I told my pastor and my, my, my bishop that I'm going to be leaving the organization. Because I don't believe in that teaching, you know. So I just, but that ain't my question. But 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 I just, well, brother, I feel your pain. That, I that, understand that, that, that you know. But my but my first one is is about what's the uh, communion. I just want to know: do do unsaved folks take communion? And the second one is: do Christian play the stock market? Okay. Okay. Yes. When you say Christians play the stock market, invest, uh, invest. Oh yeah. Well, let me say this here. Many jobs have what they call 401k. 401k is a retirement fund, retirement plan. I used to have it myself. I don't have it now cause I'm self-employed. Uh, -uh. but let me tell you, my son, the nurse, he called me two or three weeks ago and asked me, about, uh, I think 401k. He called me and asked me about it. And I told him, by all means, son, you know, by all means, you, nothing wrong with it, you know. And, and basically, not only him, but twin, not, not this twin, the other twin. We had this conversation a couple weeks ago, you know, with his job, whereby the company will match up to a certain percentage based on how much you put in. And just say if you put in 6% of your check, the company will basically give you or match 6% of what you put in to put into a 401k retirement plan for you. So basically what they're doing is giving you 6%. I told my son, whatever the maximum amount is that they will match, I said, put at least that amount in. I said, otherwise than that, you're leaving money on the table. They're offering to give you money. If you would invest your own money, they're going to match it. But you got to, and I, I'm like, it ain't their money. It, it, they ain't going to come back and take it back. It's your money. It's like me coming along and, and saying, uh, a fellow in the street say, okay, uh, you put $500 a month in your savings, and I'm going to give you $500 just for saving your money. Who wouldn't take it? It's a retirement. When you say stock market, basically that's what that is. They're taking your money and investing it. They're investing it. And based on how those companies do, a lot of times you make a, a good amount of money. You do. Listen, I'm not only a preacher, I run a business. And I deal with this stuff. I deal with it. You know, uh, 
So for when you say investing in, in stock, 401k, that's considered stock. I can't condemn that. I can't condemn that at all. You know, if I remember years ago, that was a company, and I'm sure y'all uh, remember or then heard of Pra America. Y'all heard of that company? Pra America thinks like an insurance company. Well, back in the day, and, and I'm just using them for an example because I remember back in the day when I was coming up, before they had what they call the IPO, initial public offering. You know, when they stopped, went out, went out public where everybody could buy it. You know, some of us, you know, was back in that, you know, in, in, you know, involved with all that where, you know, they would give us a chance to buy stock first. You know, and then when that thing go public, man, you make a lot of money. You make a lot of money, you know, so. Uh, I can't condemn a saint having a retirement. We've got, we got saints right now that's retired. And it is because they use wisdom coming up, whereby now they have a good retirement because of, you know, 401ks and things like that. So to answer your question, brother, I couldn't condemn nothing like that. I can't. Now, for as taking communion, you're asking, do unsaved. In other words, those that do not have the Holy Ghost. Are they allowed to take communion? All right. Give me Mark, son. Go back to Mark. 14. And we're going to start reading at verse 22 one more time. Mark 14. And we're going to start reading at verse 22. What did it say, Brace? And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it. This is what we call communion, right, brother? Jesus took bread and did what? And blessed and break it. He blessed the bread and he break the bread. And what happened? And gave to them and said. And he gave the bread to them and said what? Take, eat. Read it. This is my body. Read it. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. He gave the cup to them. And they all drank of it. All right, let me ask you a question. Jesus serving the, the, his disciples here, that's called the apostles, communion, correct? At this time, which one got the Holy Ghost? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not a single one of them that he's serving got the Holy Ghost. Not one. Holy Ghost not yet poured out. But Jesus serving them communion. Look here. They was following Jesus and they was obeying Jesus. They have not yet received the Holy Ghost yet. But Jesus is serving them communion. Not a single one got the Holy Ghost yet. Let me show you when they got when they're gonna receive the Holy Ghost. Give me Luke 24, sir. Start at verse 49. Luke chapter 24, and at verse 49. Watch, watch the prophecy here. Luke 24 and at verse 49. Mm -hmm. What did it say, Brace? And behold, I send I send the promise of my father upon you. Jesus telling them. I'm going to send the promise of my father. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm going to send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Read it. Until you be endued with power from on high. Wait a minute. Tarry where? In the city of Jerusalem. Until what? Until you be endued with power from on high. All right. Now let's go to Jerusalem. Let's go to Jerusalem. Now listen, bro. He already served in communion. Now he's telling them, now y'all go wait in Jerusalem. Until you receive power from on high. In other words, until you receive the Holy Ghost. But they already had communion now. Now let's go to Jerusalem, so Acts 2. And start reading at verse number 1. What did it say? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. What happened? They were all with one accord in one place. And what happened? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And what happened? And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And what happened? And they were, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And what happened? And it sat upon each of them. And they, was all? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They just not receiving the Holy Ghost. Hey, brother, but they not already had communion. They already had. Let me show you something, my brother. Here we go again. I remember that teaching coming up. Used up. I remember that teaching coming up. I came up under Bishop Hunter. And that was part of the teaching back in that day. Unless you had the Holy Ghost, you couldn't partake in communion. I don't teach that. I don't teach that because... I don't have scripture to talk like that. And 
The Bible teaches as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. If a person have put on Christ through and by water baptism and they're striving all they know to obey the word of God, I don't have the biblical authority to tell them they cannot partake in the Lord's Supper. I don't. Ha I will never be guilty of telling them, no, you can't do it because I don't have scripture to say that. Let me show you what I do, brother. What I do is teach the word of God. First Corinthians. Uh, 11 bracing. Start reading at verse 24. Let me show you what I teach. To even them that say they got the Holy Ghost. Because in some cases. Some of them need to stay away from the cup. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because in some cases, some of them that say they got the Holy Ghost ain't living right. So I don't try to pick and judge and say, well, you say you got the Holy Ghost. Okay, you could take it. But you say you ain't got it, so don't you take it. I, the scriptures don't give me that. Let me show you. I have to teach it exactly the way Paul told it. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 said what? And when he had given thanks, he break it and said. When he had given thanks, he break it and said. Take eat. Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. He took the cup. When he had supped, say. What? This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Read it. This do ye as often as ye drink it. As often as ye drink it. In remembrance of me. Read it. For as often as ye eat this bread. As often as ye eat this bread. And drink this cup. And drink this cup. Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Read it, son. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord. How? Unworthily. Stop a minute. Whosoever. Whosoever. Did it say whosoever? Whosoever. I have a question. Who does whosoever cover? Everybody. That covers everybody. I don't try to pick and prune and say, you say you got the spirit, you take it, you say you don't know. Uh-uh. I teach the word to whosoever. That's to everybody. Some of them that say they got the Holy Ghost, if you know you ain't living right, you need to stay away from the cup. Stay away from it. If a person has been baptized and took on Jesus Christ through and by water baptism and they know within themselves that they're striving to live a life to please the Lord, I don't have the authority to tell them you cannot partake. That won't be on Murray. I teach the word and put it on y'all. Because Paul going to say in a few minutes, let a man examine himself. And that's where I teach it, bro. I teach the word, and everybody got to examine themselves. Continue to read, bro. Well, for whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Read it, son. But let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. It didn't say let the preacher examine you. It said let a man examine himself. I teach the word. You examine your own self. Read it, son. But let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread. And, and then after examining yourself, you find yourself worthy. You're striving to live a life to please the Lord. You know that within yourself. The Bible said what? And so let him eat of that bread. Then you eat of that bread after examining your own self. Whether you say you got the spirit or not. Examine your own self. Then let him do what? And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Read it. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. Unworthy. You know you ain't living right. You know good and well you ain't striving to live right. Many cases, brother, saints who know they ain't living right, they don't want others to like. Twin ain't take a million. He did something wrong. He, he, he ain't living right. <laughs> Up there, read. <laughs> Do you understand? This is what they're afraid of, you know, so, well, I'm going to just take it anyway. They don't want nobody looking at me trying to figure out what I did. So I'm going to just, let me tell you, I'd rather for them to look at me sitting over there not taking it than to look at me stressed out in front of the altar at the church at my funeral. Because that's what the Bible fit to let you know. That that's what will happen if you know you ain't living right. So I'd rather them look at me sitting over in the corner not taking it 
Then they look at me and say, man, he shouldn't have met with that cup. He know he wasn't living right. <laughs> Do you understand? Continue to read, son. What did it say? For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Not discerning the Lord's Not body. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and, and sickly among you. Many are weak and sickly? Did it say sickly? Weak and sickly among you. Sickly. Sickly. You drunk, you took up that Lord's Supper. You know you wasn't living right. The Bible said many are weak and sickly. And what else? And many sleep. Sleep ain't talking about, you know, just taking you a nap now. This sleep, this Bible talking about here, you ain't waking up from that nap. Not until the Lord call you up. Do you understand? The Bible said what, Brace? For this cause many are weak and sickly among you. Read that. And many sleep. And many sleep. For we would judge ourselves. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. We should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Chasing of the Lord. That we should not be condemned with the word. So, brother, that's that's your answer there. I teach the word. You know, I don't have a scripture to say, well, this one here has got the Holy Ghost can, but this one here can't. And I say that, you know, again, I grew up listening to that teaching. And I say to it, you know, I say to everybody. If you say that one without the Holy Ghost cannot take it, why did Jesus give it to the apostles? They didn't have the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? They didn't receive the Holy Ghost until later. But they was with Jesus and they knew they were striving to live right. And Jesus knew that. Uh huh. Not striving. And you know, they out there drug it. You got some out there, I know, that drug it and then we start communion. They want to take communion. They better run they as far away from that cup as they can, yeah, bro. But they don't know. They don't. They don't have. They they like being taught that they, you know. I had one guy working with me that the Monday was the communion that was that Sunday work that Monday. Uh, give him the mic. Go ahead. And mm -hmm. then he say, I say, ask him how was your day. I said church was good. And he say, he because he, he he don't understand. He he say, he say yeah, I took communion. I got my. He don't know the reason why he taking it. Right. I got from him. Right. He ain't getting the understanding. He just taking it thinking that's going to get him to heaven or something. Right. Well, I'm going to tell you who that fall back on. That fall back on the preacher. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. For he not properly teach. teaching teach the people. That's what I'm saying. He got that Let me, what, what we just read to you in 1 Corinthians 14, bro. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Before I serve communion, I'll be dealing with this, bro. Yeah. And look at even even these brothers do the reading for me. Even when we up before the altar, we started reading them scriptures for everybody to examine themselves. This is not a game. This is not a joke. It's life and death in that cup. It's both now. It's life in it because Jesus said, my God, man, give me St. John 6 real fast. St. John 6, start round about verse 50. St. John 6.55. See, is that what I want? I want to show you in the cup, it's, it's life, but it's also death. St. John 6.55. What did it say? For my flesh is meat indeed. My flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh. He that eateth my flesh. And drinketh my blood. And drinketh my blood. Dwelleth in me. Dwelleth in me. And I in him. And I in him. Read it. As the living Father hath sent me. As the living Father hath sent me. And I live by the Father. And I, Jesus letting you know, the living Father hath sent me. Going back to what you said earlier, brother. Sent me. He never said the living Father hath became me. He said the living Father hath sent me. Read it, son. And I live by the Father. I live by the Father. So he that eateth me. He that eateth me. Even he shall live by me. You got to eat it, brother. Read it, son. This is that bread which came down from heaven. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. Read it. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Hallelujah to God. Read it, son. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. So in that cup is life. It's resembling what's, what Jesus did on our behalf. In that cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ. That bread represents his body. And what we do is commemorate 
what that body did on our behalf. When we drink, we're commemorating the blood that he shed on our behalf. This is what he told us to do. This do as oft as should, give me that, First Corinthians 11. This do as oft, as oft as you do this, you show forth the Lord's death till he come. First Corinthians 11, right about verse 26. What did it say, son? For as often as you eat this bread. As often as you eat this bread. And drink this cup. And drink this cup. You do show the Lord's death till he come. Until he get back. So it's life in it, brother. But if a, you mentioned about folks drugging and all this stuff, brother, they don't understand what they do. It's like the Bible said, they know not what they do. They need to be taught. It falls back on the preacher, brother. How can they hear without a preacher? Listen to me. I understand. How serious it is to me. You know, I feel guilty. I feel something gonna happen to me, and I know this person ain't living up to. It. How could he know? Evidently, he, he don't know Christ. Right. He can't know. He said, oh, you, you "Remember? How can they remember him? They don't even know him. They don't know him. They don't you know." know him. I, I feel like I'm gonna be in trouble if I pass it to him. Right. And if I know, and I know they ain't right. So, now, let me show you something, brother. When I say that I don't teach. That a person with the Holy Ghost is the only ones can take it. And the person without the Holy Ghost shouldn't take it. I don't teach that because I can't read it like that. But now I do teach, as we just read in 1 Corinthians, brother, a person got to be living right. If a person ain't living right, man, get away from that cup. That's just plain and simple. Look here. If the preacher uh, truly had a knowledge of the word and cared about the people, he warned the people. Get away from that cup. Get away from it. Because not only is it life in it, but it's death likewise. It's death. All right? Brother McCann's in the back. Go ahead, McCann. Um, just elaborating on what he was saying, if you go back to Mark 18, Mm -hmm. uh, Mark 14, uh, verse 18 through 20, wouldn't Judas be a good example of drinking from that cup unworthily and his outcome? That's a good example. That's a good example. Judas, the scripture talks about he was a devil from the beginning. From the beginning, he was a devil. And yeah, by all means, at the table, Jesus told them, one of you, one of you is going to betray me. One of you going to do it. Judas did it. And we know his outcome. He went out, my God, man, and hung himself. Killed his own self. 14, 18, Brace said, what? Mark 14, 18. And as they said and, and did eat. Read it. Jesus said, verily I say unto you. What? One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. One of you that eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrow, what? sorrowful. And uh -huh. to say unto him one by one, one is it by I? One. Read it. Is it I? Is it I? And another said, Is it I? Read it. And he answered and said unto them, What? It is the one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the ditch. Read it. The Son of Man indeed goeth. Read it. As it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. What does it say about it? Good word for that man if he had never been born. Ain't that something? Good if he had never been born. Man, that's heavy right there. It's better if you had not even been born. So, brother, good example. By all means, Judas, Bible says he was a devil from the beginning. He betrayed Jesus. He was there at the table with them. And yes, his end result, he went out, took his own life. Took his own life. All right? That answers your question, my brother? Yes, Any more questions? Get my brother right here in front. All right, my brother. Yeah, um, I know some of these uh, pastors, they be telling people they take uh, communion at home and stuff. I know you preached something on it before, but just, you know, since- Taking communion at home. Yeah. I don't have scripture where saints are allowed to hang out at home and take communion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been asked that. I've been asked that where <coughs> saints, you know, 
said, well, I've heard even some say they baptized themselves. I've heard all this stuff. I've heard that. Where they wanted to, you know, know, could we, I think, what was that? I think the question was, could we baptize them virtually? Yes, I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. I don't know, sister. It was, a, it was a guy out of Utah. Huh? I heard of a situation where a preacher did that. A preacher did that? Yeah. It, it, it's, look, you know, I know technology has only increased, but for me to baptize you, I got to be in the water with you. You remember the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip? See, here is water. What do it hinder me to baptize? To be baptized? He commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down in the water together. He wasn't zooming it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't baptize him via zoom. No, no, no. So, brother, to answer your question, no, no such thing as that. In order to take communion properly. It has to be done according to the scripture. Jesus, being the minister, served the apostles. He served those communion that was there. And he left us an example that we should do the same. Not only did he serve them communion, but afterward took a, a towel and girded himself and washed their feet. We do the same thing. You know, I, my, myself, and the other ministers, you know, we serve the communion. And then afterward, you know, now here, here's a rule again, what I was talking about earlier, rules and doctrine. Here's a rule at our, organ, at our church. After communion is served, when the Bible talks about Jesus girded himself and started washing the disciples' feet, what we do after the communion is served, I, we separate the men from the women. That's a rule. I, I can't read that, but you can't condemn it. Because I'm like Paul. Paul said, I speak according to the occasion. Right now, we got an occasion going on where uh, flesh is a mess. So I'm not going to have brothers washing the sisters' feet. That's no wisdom there. You know, not in this hour. Not in this hour. Because we got too much flesh now involved. So I'm not going to have, you know, a brother washing the sister's feet and, you know, 20 minutes, he's still washing. <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. Like, sister, come on now. You know, you, you know, come on. <laughs> so, I mean, we don't want to bring sin into this or lust into this. We don't want to bring that. So we separate. I have the brothers to stay in the sanctuary. And the sisters would go back in the dining hall or back in the youth facility. They got plenty of room where they can wash one another's feet. That's what we do. Brothers stay in the sanctuary. We wash one another's feet. I ain't worried about the brothers washing mine for 20 minutes. <laughs> hey, after they fill them oh, with the coins and calluses and all that kind of <laughs> They make that thing quick in a hurry. All right, Pastor, that's clean every week. <laughs> Do you understand? They ain't gonna be done for 20 minutes. You know, so, you know, and then after the sisters are done, you know, we have sisters in, in the back that's well familiar with it. Mother Hunt, you know, Sister Morris, my wife, and others, you know, that's well familiar. Make sure everything is done properly. And then when the sisters are done, we have them come back in the sanctuary. Once they come back in the sanctuary, we do like the scripture said. Jesus, after they, you know, have was done, the Bible said they sung a hymn and went out after we're done everybody come back in the sanctuary we sing a hymn and we go out we go right to that kitchen and eat bro <laughs> because we all be good and hungry because we 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 do it on a fast we be fasting while we doing that and again that's another rule you know that's not doctrine you know that's the mindset the wisdom the lord gave me you know to we all go on a fast and on that fast, you're able to truly examine yourself. Because going back to what my brother said in the back, I don't want nobody to take it unworthily. Man, I ain't ready to bury nobody. You know, look, I, I got, you know, I, I don't like doing that. I have to do it as a pastor, but I don't like burying folk, you know. So I, my, I'm going to teach you properly 
I'm going to warn you according to the scripture to the point of putting fear in you if you know you ain't living right. I want to teach it to that extent whereby it puts fear down in you. Whereby you know I ain't fooling with that because I know I'm not living right. But now if you know you're living right, you need to be at the table because there's life in the cup likewise. To answer your question, brother, the scriptures do not give permission for saints to stay home and serve communion. They, that's not wise. You know, we had an issue that we dealt with over the air. Uh, we're going to get my sister behind him when I'm done. Okay, you got one more. Okay. We had an issue where we dealt with wine. Some, remember you remember that? that? Yep. That was a big issue, brother. That was a big issue. He couldn't give it up. Um, kept on going at it. Kept going at it. <laughs> and you know what? Let me show you something. I'm going to show y'all something. I told somebody about this yesterday. Now, the brother who kept going back and forth with that, I talked to him many times about the Holy Ghost. He professed he had the Holy Ghost, but he didn't believe in speaking with tongues. But he kept professing he got the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to just show you how two and two equals four. He kept Privately, I would meet with him. We would sit in the lobby hotel and talk. You know, he, he just questioned me all different angles about speaking in tongue. You know, when they received the Holy Ghost, did they all speak in tongue? Well, when I, when I read, this is what happened. Well, apparently it never happened with him, but he said he had the Holy Ghost. So I asked him one time. I said, what experience did you have? When you got the Holy Ghost, what happened? He couldn't answer me because nothing happened. Well, this is the same one that was arguing and fighting so hard for the wine. Think about it. Think about it. Listen, if I got the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, man, I ain't fighting for no wine. I don't need wine. Not if I got the Spirit of God. The spirit took the place. I used to drink. I used to drink wine coolers coming up in high school. I got saved at, uh, 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 I received the Holy Ghost at 19 years old. I think me and my wife got married at 21. I received the Holy Ghost at 19. Listen, up until then, I was, I was drinking wine coolers. I, I loved to drink it. That's what I did. But when I received the Holy Ghost, I didn't need that no more. I didn't want that no more. The Holy Ghost, it quenched my thirst. I didn't need that no more. So I would never tell the brother, look, man, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Going back to communion, I just teach the word. Now, if you ain't had no experience that they had in the Bible, why are you saying you got what they got? But you ain't had the experience that they had. That brother ended up after the teaching about the wine, we had to go into it and deal with it from the standpoint of a kosher wine, which is a pure wine, and mixed wine. We had to show the difference in the scripture. Well, they didn't know that. They didn't know it. You know, and one came back and told me he didn't see that. Well, I know it. I know it. You know, so, but this is why you need a preacher. Otherwise, in that, you run out here and make shipwreck. Think about it. Me and you coming out the stove, you got some MD 2020 and I got Thunderbird. And we both justifying ourselves. Think about it. Well, how do that even look? It shows, the, then when we went in and showed them, that's mixed wine. That's not even what they drank in the scripture. They drank the per wine. The Bible said the per blood of the grape. Per blood. That's stuff you drank of Thunderbird MD 20. Ain't no ain't nothing per body. Man, you like to match to some of this stuff in the catch a fire depending on what proof it is, you know, no. So, you know, and I thank God, you know, some settled down and was able to see it, but others kept on. And the brother, one of the brothers that kept going back and forth, he left, he left us, fine, no problem. If you ever come back, the teaching is the same. This preacher here will never justify saying, walk around drinking wine. Man, when I was in the, when I, before I received the spirit, 
I walked after my flesh. But I can't walk after my flesh after receiving the spirit. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Um, next one was uh, I think you had talked about uh, investment. I know I went off of uh, Matthew 25, 14 mm -hmm. um, to verify for me doing investment. So I don't okay. know if that's correct. Matthew 25, 14. Yeah. Matthew 25, 14. You All right. Give it to the sister behind him. She's got her hands up. Matthew 25, 14, Brace, what is that? For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country uh -huh. who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Right. And unto one he gave five talents. Right. To another two and to the another one. Read it. To every man according to his several, several ability. Read it. And straightway took his journey. Right. Then he had... Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same. He went and traded with the same. And what happened to him? And made them other five talents. In other words, he took the five he had and made five more. He invested it. Exactly. What else, son? And likewise, he that had received two. Read it. He also gained other two. Read it. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth. And hid his Lord's money. Hid it. Read it. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth, reckoneth with them. Uh-huh. And so he that had received five talents came and, and brought other five talents. Read it. Saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Lord, you deliver me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. I, I put it to work. I invested that. What did he say, son? His Lord said unto him, What? Well done. What did he say? Well done. Well done? Thou so good. he had five and made five more. He said, well done? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Read it. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Read it. I will make thee ruler over many things. Read it. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Read it, son. He also that had received two talents came and said. What did he say? Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Read it. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Read it. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Read it, son. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Read it, son. And to that one, to the joy of thy Lord. Read it. Then he which had received the one talent the came one and said. The one that received the one talent, what happened? Came and said. What he said? Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. <laughs> Listen, I ain't talking. Lord, I know you a hard man. Lord, you're a hard man. What did he say, son? Reaping where thou hast not sown. Read it. And gathering where thou hast not straw. Read it, son. And I was afraid. I was what? I was afraid. Read it. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. I hid what you gave me in the earth, Lord. Though there thou hast, that is thine. Read it. His Lord answered and said unto him. What? Thou wicked and slothful servant. What he called it? Thou wicked and slothful servant. Read it, son. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not. Read it. And gathers where I have not straw. Read it. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to ex exchanges. Read it. And then at my at my coming. At my coming. I should have received my own with usury. Read it, son. Take therefore the talent from him. That that he had, take it from him. He ain't did nothing with it. Take it from him and what? And give it unto him which hath ten talents. Oh, he, he know what to do with it. Give it to the one that had, remember he started with five, gained five more, he got ten, so take that, because he ain't did nothing with it, give it to the one that got ten, and what happened? For unto everyone that hath shall be given. Read it. And he and he shall have abundance. Read it. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. All right. All right, my sister, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, um, I was just saying that I was one of them that take communion at home mm -hmm. and because I was taught that I could, you know. Mm -hmm. And when they said about going to um, taking communion at church, mm -hmm. I was taught that once you repent, you know, you know, but you repent, even if you know, as a sinner can take it once they repent, they once they repent, they can take it, take the communion. Right. Once they repent, they can take it, even though they saying that they're not living right they're not living for christ like in, in in the scriptures say that the um the parts they were living for christ they were uh -huh. following christ uh -huh. even though they did not have the holy ghost right but they were living for him and following him so right. they could have taken it right so i was with the brother when he said he's they don't they're not living 
for God. They're not following him. Totally and, different situation. Eh? Right. But uh -huh. once they repent. Right. Coming right. to the church and communion coming around. Right. Just repent of your sin. Right. Then you can take it. By all that means. Would, if that I person mean. truly repent, truly repent and know that they are living right. They know within themselves. This is what Paul meant when he said, let a man examine himself. Truly repent, know they living right, right. then I will never be a preacher to say, no, you can't take it. But, but what I'm saying is this, what about the one that not living right, but they're telling them once they repent, then they can take it. Repent, but they're not, but oh, they're not for that moment. Oh, but, no. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. <laughs> for that no, no, they're no. not living right. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, Different situation. Okay. Different. Listen, right. I'm talking as about as a totally. see that. Right. Okay, let me explain that situation. Yeah. That's a totally different situation. You, you're talking about basically somebody come through the door, just say shacking. Yeah, right. There you, go. you know, they got dope you know in their car. Yeah. You know, cigarettes and all in their pocket. Yeah. You know, and they come in and communion being served right. and they repent, Lord, I'm sorry, let yeah. me take it. Yeah. No, that ain't what we're talking about. I'm talking about a person that the repented of their sins been baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and know they striving to live a life to please the Lord, but have not yet received the Holy Ghost. That I understand. Pastor. Right. Right. But That's who I'm talking about. Right. I figured that. Right. But what I'm saying, what I was taught. Right. My past. Right. Preaching. Right. Now, with communion, <laughs> you could find some. Grape juice is my fridge back in the days and crackers on the side because I'm going to take communion at home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we were, <laughs> we taught that so we could have done that and right. it was good in the sight of God. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that's, that was one thing too. Now we were taught that once you have the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. we could baptize anybody, woman or man. That the woman could baptize also. Yes. What scripture they used? They say because you have the Holy Ghost. Because because um, John the Baptist have the Holy Ghost. Yes, he was qualified to baptize Jesus Christ. So once we have the Holy Ghost, we could go baptize. You know, and then. But here, here's the thing. The Bible said, "Whatsoever things are written aforetime is written for our learning." Now, if we're gonna go by what's written. If they're saying that a female mm -hmm. can baptize as long as she's got the Holy Ghost, yeah. they've got to read that. They've got to give chapter and verse mm -hmm. where somebody in the Bible did that before them. Mm -hmm. And if they can't read that, Ecclesiastes said, wow. there's no new thing under the sun. The thing that have been is that that shall be. Yeah. So for a female to be able to baptize somebody, they got to read that. Mm -hmm. I can't read that in the Bible. Yeah. And if you can't read that, sister, we can't do it. We can't just take it upon ourselves and start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. We can't. Mm -hmm. So I totally disagree with that. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist, by all means, mm -hmm. qualification mm -hmm. to baptize someone, John the Baptist gives us that qualification. Mm -hmm. Two things he had, Holy Ghost, and he was a believer mm -hmm. in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That, and, and of course, he was a man. Yes. Believer, got the Holy Ghost, and he's a male. Right. All when you look in the Bible, the only ones that when the Bible talks about baptism, it's dealing with men. Mm -hmm. That's in line with preaching. You know, then they that gladly received the word were baptized. Well, who was delivering the word? A man was. And then the people got baptized. That's no such thing as a woman baptized. The same church you come from, sister, they believe in women preachers as well? Yeah. 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 There it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, so if they believe in women preachers, by all means, right. they're going to believe in women baptizing as well. Yeah, we, they, 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 you know, we could have we could have ministered to people and if they want to get baptized wherever we could find some you know they actually said in, that we can do don't let a don't let a person don't pass up that opportunity for a person to be saved 
so we can baptize them because we fill with the Holy Ghost. Now, we go back to the book of um, 1 Corinthians when we, um, we're talking about Paul said that I suffer not a woman to preach or teach. Right. They when I when I approach them with that situation because I've started to learn from you. They said is at the moment is what was going on why he said that. That what they tell me. Right. Because I was questioning. So is what was what was going on in the church just like you said. Um, he said, at what is going on at the moment, you can make rules. Right, so right. So he's saying that Paul was doing that at the time. That's not true. That's not true. The Bible condemns women preachers from, from Old Testament right. to New. That I know now. Right. Yeah. Uh, let, let's go to Old Testament first. Give me Isaiah 3.12. Yeah, that was condemned from, from Old Testament to New. Right. right. You know, that was no specific occasion that caused Paul to say that, you know, because of only what was going on at that time. Isaiah 3, 12. What did it say, Brace? As for my people. As for my people. Children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. Women trying to rule over my people. Oh, my people. Oh, my people. They which lead thee. They which lead thee do what? Cause thee to err. They which lead thee cause thee to err. And destroy the way of thy paths. Destroy? Destroy the way of thy path. That's Old Testament. First Timothy, son. Huh? First Timothy 2, start at verse 12. Start at verse 11. Let your women learn in silence without subjection. But I suffer not. First Timothy 2, 11 said what? Let the, women learn in, let the woman learn in silence without subjection. Learn in silence. Learn in silence. Let the woman, let the woman. He didn't say let the women right here because of what's going on. That ain't what he said. He said let the woman. In general. And then... We're going to go to Corinth, what Paul going to say, all churches. Yeah. Let you know it. We ain't dealing with something specifically at the moment. He's going to say in Corinth, all churches. First Corinthians. Uh, 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 go ahead and read what you have, son. 212. 12, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Read it. But I suffer not a woman to teach. I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to use of authority over the man. Nor to use of authority over the man. But to be in silence. But to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Adam Eve. Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. Adam was not the one deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Give me First Corinthians 14, 33. God is not the author of confusion. He's not. And let me tell y'all something. Anytime you got a church where a woman stand head, stand pastor, you're going to have a house of confusion. You got to have it because it's out of order. It's got to be confusion. 1 Corinthians 14, 33 said, what race? For God is not the author of confusion. But of peace. But of peace as in all churches of the saints. Let who? Let your women keep silence in the churches. Let your women keep silence in this Corinthian church because we're having problems. In the churches. Read that again, son. Let your women keep silence in the churches. 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 Let your women keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Read it. But they are commanded to be under obedience. As. As also saith the law. If they will learn anything. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. How you feel? For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Shame. A shame. Why aren't they shamed today? They get up, my God, man, go to hacking like a man, sweating like men. Monday, they voice sound like mine. Oh, yeah. Monday morning, preach. we call it preacher's voice. Monday morning, my voice like grab. It, it, you know, just from hard preaching. Let me tell you something. I want to go to Greek Sister Murray and her voice like mine. Man, that's too much gravel in the house. She got to stay soft and feminine. I go to greet her, you greet him. <laughs> oh, no. Not at all. What did he say, son? 14, 30, round about 35. What did he say? And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. What did he say, son? For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Read it, Brayson. What? What? Came the word of God out from you. Came the word of God. You see... A lot of people like to say, well, if they can't speak, they can't, you got to keep silent. They can't sing. That's not what he's dealing with. He's not dealing with saying. Well, if they can't, if they can't say nothing, that means they can't testify. That's not what he's dealing with. This verse lets you know plainly exactly what he's talking about. 
What did it say, son? What? What? Came the word of God out from you. Word of God. That's what he's dealing with. What? You mean the word of God coming out from you? You? Word coming out from you? Paul like, no, nah, come on now. Paul said, what? Came the word of God out from you? Read it. Or came it unto you only? Or did it come unto you only? Search the scripture and find anywhere in the Bible where the word of God from the standpoint of preaching came out from a woman. Genesis to Revelation. Old Testament to New. Go ahead, sister. Pastor, I, I suppose to speak to a pastor, you know, his wife come and do her here and the pastor came and you know, this, this you were preaching and woman preacher, so he he asked, you know, I was telling him, no, woman can't preach. Oh, yes, woman can preach. Do you know Eve was a preacher? Eve because was a preacher. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was, she was preaching to, I said she was preaching to the devil or something. I don't know. He, he, <laughs> he was really serious with it. And, and all, you know, the woman that followed Jesus, you know, when he just um, raised from the dead and, you know, Oh, he sent the first Mary Magdalene to go preach. You know, all these things. And the, the one said, about Mary is a common one, but Eve? Yes, yes he said. He oh, said, oh, that's he a said, new one. Do there. you know Eve was a preacher? I said, Who did she preach to? <laughs> exactly. I was like, yeah, you know, but I don't have to. Huh? Was certain, like, okay. Okay. And, if, and then when when I, I wear my shoes, <laughs> that's, a, that's why we get in that's trouble. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Says she told a serpent what God said. <laughs> exactly. She told a serpent what God said. <laughs> she preaching to the devil. <laughs> Well, I'm telling you the truth. They come with, come with anything, don't and, they? And this is a pastor now of a church. And you know, it's you know, his wife come to me to get her hair done, and I'm telling you, I gotta be fighting with them doing their hair. <laughs> and when you preach, I said, Oh no, he don't say I said that's so you I had our said. broadcast playing oh, all day long. And so when they come in and they see they come to church, I'm so you're gonna run you gonna run your class away, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it fight with them. They some of them in their flesh, some of them want to preach. This little girl, she's 16. When I, I see a video with her and her father, Burke, and she and I get into it. So I said, little girl, no. So um I tell, oh, they always say with a woman, oh, she radical for Jesus. She will she radical. This is the thing when woman preacher that they're radical. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> The blame falls back on these preachers, these men, who's got these women in that type of situation. That young girl, 16 year old, someone taught her that food. That's a her father? Yeah. Well, that's where she got it from. Yeah, because when, when she and I get into it, that's when she called the daddy. Oh, she called it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she called. She called some reinforcement on you. She did. She sure did. And I said, Oh, I got it. I said, No, you ain't teach me nothing. Evil the preacher. No, sir. No. One time I was um I was in the barber shop. This has been some years ago. And it was a preacher always come to the barber shop. A, a guy, kind of stout guy. And he always come in there and jump on folk with the bike. And the barber who would cut our hair, he didn't like it. But the guy, he would just jump on folk with the bike. So I was in there one day. And I think he was from the Church of God in Christ. And they believe in women preachers. So I'm in there, just listening to him talk. You know, he just, you know, going on about women preachers and whatnot. And, you know, someone watch our telecast. But I don't, I don't jump on folk. You know, I'm, I'm there to get a haircut. I'm just letting him talk, letting him talk. And some kind of way, I, don't, I think it was the barber or somebody. You know, we just let him run his mouth. He asked me about it. And I said, no, sir. Just as calm. And then the, the, the preacher over there, he want to turn toward me. He didn't know me. He didn't know me. And after a while, I start calling scriptures for him to read. And letting him know what the scripture is saying. 
And after a while, he couldn't say nothing. The barber started messing with him. The barber told him, uh-huh. <laughs> hey, the barber said, you done jumped on an alligator back night. <laughs> he said, uh-huh. You know when I went back, the barber told me, said he don't bother nobody no more. The barber said, he don't bother nobody no more. He told him, so you done jumped on an alligator back now. That he done took you under. <laughs> He was quoting all this stuff, mm -hmm. but nobody in there knew better. So he could get by with it. Mm -hmm. But that day, and I was just letting them talk. If they hadn't pulled me in it, I wouldn't have said a word. But when you open the door, uh -huh. I'm going to take it off the hinges. <laughs> and that's what we did. So, and now I can run into him, you know, I, that's been some years ago. So I don't even know if he's still living now, but what, but. After that, I would run into him from time to time. He was just as humble as a lamb. He was. But no, sister, to answer your question, no such thing as a woman baptizing nobody. No such thing as a woman preacher. Finish up 1 Corinthians 14, around about 35, 36. There's a statement in there that Paul going to, I often say he's closing the door behind him. So nobody can come behind him and say nothing else after he depart off the scene. First Corinthians 14, start at verse 35. Right? So what did it say, son? And if they will learn anything, get if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it's a shame. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Read it, son. What? What? Came the word of God out from you? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? Or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet. I love this right here. Paul said, if any man think himself. To be a prophet or spiritual or spiritual. Let him do what? Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. He shut the door behind. Him. If any man think himself to be a prophet or even spiritual. Paul said, let him acknowledge that what I'm writing is the commandment of the Lord. What did he say, son? But if a man be ignorant. But if he want to be ignorant. Let him be ignorant. Go on and be ignorant, man. Go on and be ignorant. So no such thing, sister. If, if, if preachers and people, even sisters knew the danger of this woman preaching spirit, they'll stay away from it. That is a stubborn and rebellious spirit. You know, you know Pastor, Looking back on my, where I'm coming from, right. what I've seen and stuff, I, I can see it now. You can see it now. Yeah, I can see it now. And like you would say, you have no friends. I have no friends left because <laughs> I'm telling them, the church sisters, they don't want to hear that. Yeah. They don't want to hear that. And I mean, literally, they don't talk to me no more mm -hmm. because I don't open a door and let the devil in. That's I understand. Tell they tell well, so, so, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Look, the Bible said, rejoice ye in that day. Whenever they separate you from their company, defraud you, throw your name out, it's nothing all for the Son of God's sake, meaning you want to obey what's written in this book, his words, rejoice. Don't hang your hand. It's fine. If they knew the danger of that spirit, they would stay as far from it as humanly possible. Let me tell y'all. I'm 53 years old. I have been ministering since I was like 24, many years. That is one of the most stubborn spirits that I have encountered. And it is hard for women to be delivered from it. Let me tell you something. They can be delivered. I've seen some delivered from being in the pulpit but still got that spirit whereby it's hard for them to listen. When I say listen, they used to call in the shots. They're not used to being subject. They used to call in the shots. And the ones that are married, who had who married to women that was women preachers, them brothers have a hard time. I'm telling you what I know. They have a hard time. When the Bible talks about the wives being in subjection to their own husbands, you know, 
one, one, one uh, brother in Mobile, um, him and his wife end up divorcing. His wife's mother was a preacher. The daughter was raised up. She became a preacher. Well, the brother is at our church, and he know what the Bible says about it. It was turmoil. They ended up divorcing, going their separate ways. When the Bible talked about wife being subject to their own husbands and all that, he said the woman preacher, his mother-in-law, said that is only for men. That's only when it comes to men paying the bills. That, 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 that's what it so that's only with the men paying the bills. I mean, he did tell me how many times she'd been married, his mother-in-law. I can't remember right now. But let me tell you something. A lot of women preachers are divorced. I don't say this to belittle nobody. I say this because it's reality. Why are so many divorced? Because a real man is not going to tolerate uh, his wife trying to run him and drive him. A real man ain't putting up with that. I'm telling you, I've seen it over and over and over again. I had two sisters come to the church. It's been a couple years ago. Some of these sisters in Mobile, uh, Saints in Mobile, remember. They came. Man, they were shouting. Well, they did some shouting. And it's fine. They're wrong with shouting. Call me with the right spirit. Came in, came in my office. And they was telling me about all, they totally knew now. The way I met them, I was at the church one day doing some work. And there was no service going on. They saw me in the, in the parking lot of the church. They whooped around and came up in there telling me, oh, they watched the broadcast. And oh, how old the Lord and led them to come here. This is the church they coming to. You know, no problem. No problem. But when that word started coming forth, me and both of them was in the office, the mama and the daughter, and they was telling me about all these spiritual gifts that they got, all the things that God blessed them to do. And I just listened. Then we started talking about marriage. And one of them saying somebody, yeah, my third husband, and I'm listening. After a while, the door opened for me to talk. And I had to let them sisters know. I said, listen. I said, listen. This women preacher stuff is a joke. You know, I had a good heart-to-heart -heart talk with both of them. You know, one of them, I think, was like on their third husband and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, but yet they, they some mighty women of God, they preachers and this, that, and the other. And I start trying to talk to them. I said, listen, listen, God ain't call y'all to do this. The, you know, the Lord ain't put you in a place to do this. And this is why you having so many problems. A man ain't putting up with that. You know, you know what they had to confess to me? We didn't know. We just didn't know. That's my job as a teacher, sister. We didn't know. The other churches, they ain't talking. Preachers, we had, they ain't talking. They ain't told us this. I was told I had a calling on my life. This is the kind of stuff that I heard and I hear constantly. And I'm going to tell you, it's, it's marriages. I've counseled it over and over again. Where they, they, where they, where they come from uh, being a woman preacher or daughters to grow up where mamas was woman preachers or grandmamas are they coming from from churches where the pastor was a woman i'm going to tell you something it is it is almost impossible for these for these sisters to become subject to their husbands because they take on an authoritative controlling spirit they don't take on a spirit of subjection of listening to nobody i'm telling you i've counseled it too many times you, you know what my old pastor because when I went to him with this topic, first he said, you don't think you mean they, they can't speak, do you? But his thing is, 
he put them up there and they could preach because he is the pastor. So they're under him. They, so, don't, they don't hold the office. I hold the office. They don't. So they can, you know, I let, they, they're under him. So he gave them authority to do so. But remember what Paul said. If any man think himself to be a prophet yeah. or spiritual, let him acknowledge that what I'm writing is the Christ. commandments of the Lord. He said it right. He's the pastor, but he's not the Lord. Not, yeah. The Lord said they can't do it. A pastor can't give a woman or a man the authority to do something that God said they can't do. Man, you can't trump God. You can't do that. So it's dangerous, sister. Yeah. It's dangerous. Any more questions? Yeah, Go ahead. All right. Let's let's get my sister back. back. She had her hand up back there. Then we gonna come up to my sister up here. I'm Sister Whittingham, and I have a question, and I need you, Elder Murray, to elaborate a little on it. It's about my sister. She's much older than I am. She lives in Maryland, mm -hmm. and um. Her husband was married and divorced. His wife is still alive. And um, I tried to talk to her about it, you know, let her know that based on what the Bible said, because I listened to you and everything, it's not right. And I even tried to quote, quote um, 1 John 5, verse 17, to tell her that all sin is unrighteous. Right. So I need for you to speak a little on that so she could understand, because she's saying to me, that um, that's not her business. He and God has to deal with that part. He and God have to deal with it. Her but husband, she's married to it. Yes. And his wife is still alive. And she's saying that he and God has to deal with that part. All right. Luke 16, 18, sir. Luke chapter 16 and at verse 18. What did it say, Bryce? Whosoever putteth away his wife. Whosoever put away his wife. And marrieth another. All right. This would be his case. He's putting away his wife, his first wife, and marrying your sister. Putting away his wife, marrying another. What did it say? Committed adultery. Committing adultery. What else did it say? And whosoever marrieth her, that is put away. And whoever married her that has been put away from her husband, from her husband, committed adultery, committed adultery. It's adultery either way it go. Basically, sister, she's got another woman's husband. That's what it boils down to. If he's got a living wife, then basically the man that she's got don't belong to her. She is trespassing on someone else's property. That's what it boils down to. Give me, uh, give me 1 Corinthians chapter seven and start reading around about verse 10, Bracey. Then we get Romans seven. But give me 1 Corinthians seven and 10 first, and then we'll fall back to Mark. We'll get some of Mark too. And, but, uh, and unto the merit I command. This is Paul, 1 Corinthians 7 and 10. Unto the merit I command. Yet not I, but the Lord. Yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart. But and if she depart. Let her remain unmarried. Unmarried. Remain unmarried. Can't go get another. Remain unmarried. What if they want companionship? Or be reconciled to her husband. Go back to her. You notice it said her husband? That's her husband. Look here, they may not be together, maybe divorced, but in the eyes of God, still her husband. Read it, son. And let not the husband put away his wife. And let not the husband put away his wife. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, give me Mark, son. Uh, give me Romans first, 71. And then we go to Mark 10. Mark chapter 10. Romans 7 and 1 first. What did it say? Know ye not, brethren. That what? For I speak to them that know the law. That what? How that the law have dominion over a man as long as he lives. Read it. For the woman which hath an husband. The woman which hath an husband. Is bound by the law to her husband. Read it. So long as he lives. How long? So long as he lives. 
So as long as that first companion is alive, then that's his wife. That's his wife. And your sister basically would be considered sin. Read it, son. But if the husband be dead. If the husband be dead. She is loose from the law of her husband. loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth. While her husband liveth. She be married to another man. Another man. Read it. She shall be called an adulteress. Read it, son. But if her husband be dead. If her husband be dead. She is free from that law. She's free from that law. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Is that plain? Is that plain? so many people are in this situation. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to say, like I said before, it goes back to the preacher. Preacher won't preach this stuff. You know why it's not popular? It's not popular. And it makes it hard on us. Because when folks ask me, I'm going to tell you the truth. And people be like, well, man, you know, I've been, you know, I met her when I was 21 and, and it didn't work out. Well, what do I do in a case like that? All I can do is teach you the word. I can't read nowhere in the scripture where the Lord said, well, if this happened back when you were 21, I'll make an exception. I can't do that. And so, so, so many of them said to me on the line of what your sister is saying. Well, you know, I know the Lord brought me this and I know the Lord. This is mine. That first one, we was in the world. You know, we, I, we wasn't saved. You know, the Bible said what God had put us under. God, you know, what God had joined together. Let not a, a man put us under. God didn't join us together. I didn't know the Lord. She didn't know the Lord. So how did God join us together? I, all this stuff and put the murder. All of it. How did God put you together? How did, how, when the Bible said what God have joined together, let me show you something. If, if two sinners in the street get married, God join them together. Although neither one of them know God. What are you talking about, Murray? Who established the law of marriage? God did. So if they come along in a legitimate marriage and get married, God's law is what joined them together. Because God is the one who established the law of marriage. God's law united them. God's law joined them. So what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. You was united by a law that God himself instituted in the garden with Adam and with Eve. God established the law of marriage. So everybody that's in a legitimate marriage was joined together by God's law. Mark 10, 3, son. Mark 10, 3. Mark 10 and that verse 3. Let's read a little bit of that. It's going to say somewhat what I'm saying here. And then we'll get into more questions she's got. Mark 10, 3. What did it say, son? And he answered and said unto them. What? What did Moses command you? Start at verse 2. What did it say? And the Pharisees came to him and asked him. What did they ask you? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? What are they trying to do? Tempting him. That's all. Trying to tempt. They're trying to trap Jesus. What did the Bible say, son? And he answered and said unto them. What did he say? What did Moses command? What did Moses command? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and put and to put her away. Put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them. What? For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But? But from the beginning of the creation of God, made, made them male and female. What did he say, son? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Leaving father and mother. And cleave to his wife. And cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. They twain, they too shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain. They're no more twain. But one flesh. They become one flesh. They become one flesh. What did it say, son? What therefore God have joined together. What God done joined together. Let not man put a son. Read it, Brayson. And in the house. I, I love this. We started reading in Mark 10, 2. The Pharisees came to him. And the Bible said they was tempting him. Now, the Bible called the Pharisees hypocrites. So you got hypocrites coming to him, asking him a question, and they're trying to trap him. They're trying to tempt him. Now, notice now, in the house, before the Pharisees asked him the question about marriage, now, in the house, his disciples going to ask him the same question. So you got hypocrites asking, and you got his disciples going to ask the same question. And Jesus is going to give them both the same answer. Letting us know the law of marriage applies to the sinner mm -hmm. as well as his disciples. Amen. It's not two different laws. Continue to read that, son. What did he say? And in the house, his disciples asked him again in, of the same matter. In the house, 
Who disciples? His disciples. His disciples asked him in the house of the same matter. What did it say? And he said unto them. What did he say to them? Whosoever shall put away his wife. Did it say whosoever? Whosoever. 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 That got everybody. Whosoever shall do what? Shall put away his wife. Read it. And marry another. And marry another. Committeth adultery against her. Read it, son. And if a woman shall put and if a woman shall put away her husband. And if a woman shall put away her husband. And be married to another. And be married to another. She committeth adultery. That's in the house answering his own disciples now. Answer what's the same. Go ahead, sister. And also, um, Elder Murray, um, she's a missionary at the church. Sometimes she's up there preaching and doing whatever, you know, supposed to be done in the church. And I wrote you on this topic already where I saw, we spoke about it earlier on today, where we saw, where I saw there at their church, they have small kids like age five, six, seven, taking communion. Hmm. And they, they offer the kids first, and then the adult goes after. And yeah. I was talking to her about it after we reached home. And I was trying to tell her, I've never seen this in all the churches I've ever been. She said, well, they have to learn from their small. I said, yes, but communion, they don't know anything about communion. They have no idea what's going what's on. What's going on, right. You know, no so idea. She's watching the program. I tell her to watch, so I need her to learn some stuff because I don't know um, what they preach at that place. I don't know. All you can do, sister is pray for her and talk to her. Yes, pray God that the Lord open her understanding just like he's opened yours. Yes. But children like that who have no understanding of communion, we will not serve them communion. We will not do that. Look, even with baptism, before I baptize a child, they've got to understand what baptism consists of. Yes, Otherwise than that, it's a waste of time. Look, the Bible said repent. If they don't even know what repentance is, it said repent and be baptized. You, you, have you repented? Be like, huh? Like, like, like Tay Tay, my, my little grandbaby, she's two. Buster's what, three, four, three. Look here, they don't know nothing about no repentance. The Bible said repent and be baptized. They don't know nothing about repentance. So why would I take them in water? Why would you serve a child communion? Paul said, let a man examine himself. Yes, they do. They have the kids come up first for communion and then they move away and then the adult goes. So let a man examine, examine himself. Do they know how to examine themselves? I've seen them do it. Yeah, I've never seen it before. Never. Well, sister. Thank you so much. Pray for that's all you can do is pray for and keep talking to him. That's it. Go ahead, sister. By all means. By all means. He's got the mic for you. Go ahead. Say that again. When I, I have a friend, and when I was coming into the truth about married, remarriage and married, and I spoke to her about it. At the time, I didn't know the situation, but I spoke to her about it. But I don't think they believe that if they die in that situation, they are not the one, like she said, answer to God because they're not the one that is married elsewhere. They think the one that have a husband or a wife, they're the one that have to answer to God. She she repent, and, but she's still in it. She says she repent, but she's still in it. But they have to answer to God. It's like, not me, him, because he got a wife. I don't. So, But she's, she's got another another woman's husband okay, so, so why why would she not have to answer if basically you you That's got another another woman's property that makes no sense but this is what i'm saying this is what they i, I literally believe know that they're thinking oh he or she got to answer to god not me you know because he married he shouldn't you know we married up you know these mm -hmm. are what, what they think but let me show you something yeah. okay Go back to Luke 16, 18. It's going to deal even with the person that's been put away. I think that's the, that's the difference. That's In her right. case, she's not the one that's been put away. Right. It's the man's wife. I understand. I understand. 
Luke 16, 18. Go there. Luke 16, 18. Read it, Bracey. What did it say? Whosoever putteth away his wife. Whoever put away his wife. And marrieth another. And marrieth another. Committeth adultery. Committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away. Whosoever marrieth her that is put away. I got what you're saying, Pastor. Right. But what Bracey said, the one that married to the one that put away never been put away. Say for instance, but she's, I, never, I understand what you're saying, <laughs> but she, so, but basically what she's doing is like I said earlier, she's trespassing. She's got another man, another woman's husband. I mean, that's, you're in sin. You got that's another okay. woman's husband. That, that one belongs to someone else. Say it again. That's, that's still in someone else's property. I want you to make that clear because they don't think I'm this. I know what the young lady is saying because I dealt with it and she repent. Oh, I repent. And, and, but you're still in it. Okay. Okay. If there's nothing wrong with it, why, why repent? What you repent for? Because, because she didn't know blah, 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 but she, she repented. God forgive her. So what do you want me to do? God ain't going to break up no home. This is mm -hmm. the, you think God going, you want me to, I got kids or, for the fact that oh we've been together for so long, God don't God don't do that. Here's the thing: they can repent and God will forgive them. Yeah. But you can't continue in sin. Romans six and one, son. What shall we say then? Let me let me show you something. God will forgive me. God will give forgive me and you for smoking. But you got to throw the Salem's away now. You can't keep lighting up a cool every morning. Saying the Lord gonna forgive me. <laughs> At some point, you got to stop smoking cigarettes. And, and one other thing I want to know, maybe it's just me being naive. You're not living, or we not living right because you're in the sin, but you know, you're reading the Bible and the Lord is speaking to you all day long and talking to you on your bus out in tongues and you know, but you're living in the sin. I'm confused. <laughs> Don't be confused, sis. Don't be confused. <laughs> Look here. The Bible said, try the spirit, whether it be of God. Don't be confused. Look here. I hear this stuff all the time with all God. And tell, God yeah. talks to somebody for more than he talks to Moses. Yeah. Sure. And to tell them everything yeah. except yeah. what the Bible said. Exactly. It's like, it's like going back to women preachers. Look, I, I hear from these women I, all the time what God said. God yeah. said this. God showed me this. God showed me yeah. He'll show her everything except yeah. To be subject to her husband. Yeah. Now I can read that, but God just won't utter them words to her for some reason. Yeah. But He tell her everything else. So don't pay these folks no mind. Try the spirit, whether it be of God. God doing all this talking, but will never tell them what's really written in the Bible. Yeah. Don't pay that no mind, sister. Look, yeah. they can, like you said, they can bust out in tongues as much as they want. <laughs> Let them bust out and speak all night long. Look here. If they're living in adultery, yeah. at some point the Lord ought to show them that. If he is be talking to them at all. <laughs> Romans 6 and 1, what shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God will forgive you, but you can't continue in sin. The Bible said what, uh, Brace? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You can't continue in sin. God will forgive you, but you got to stop. You got you can't continue in it. The Bible said, "Read." God forbid. Read it. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If you're supposed to be dead to sin, you can't live in sin. You can't live in. It. You got to stop. All right. Any more questions? Let's get my sister up here, and we'll close out with her. It's three thirty-four. We'll close out with her. Yes, I. Uh, to uh, investments. Um, <laughs> okay, sir. If a company stop pays dividend, you have to pay tax on that dividend. Yes. Okay. Because it's considered increase. Okay. It's, it's considered increase, okay. and tithing basically is all your increase. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any more questions? Man, y'all been. Go ahead, my brother. Uh -huh. When it talks about, you know, let them go home and eat. What does that scripture say? In the, in the third Paul was condemning the way they was doing it. The way they was doing it. They wasn't doing it according to the scripture. 
And Paul was condemning their actions on the way there. First Corinthians 11. Start reading around about verse 22, racist. First Corinthians 11, 22. What did it say, son? What? What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Start at verse 21. What did it say? For in eating, everyone taketh before others before other his own supper. Read it. And one is hungry and another is drunken. Paul is condemning the way they're coming together to do this. They making this into something that it never should have been. This is supposed to be the commemoration of the Lord, what he did. So the way the Corinthians was coming together, Paul was killing it. He was knocking it out, letting them know this is not the way this is going to be done. Read it, son. For in eating, everyone taketh before another, before other his own supper. Read it. And one is hungry and the other is drunken. Read it. What? What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Y'all don't have houses to eat and drink in? Or despise you the church of God? Oh, you're going to despise the church of God? It's, it, it's, it's, they was really turning this into a spectacle. Something that was out of order. And Paul is having to set it in order. The way they was trying to do this. Read it, son. Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Read it. Or despise you the church of God and shame them that are not that you have not. Despise the church of God and shame them that have not. What is that? What shall I say to you? What? Shall I praise you in this? Shall I praise y'all in what you're doing? I praise you not. Paul said, I praise you not. Read it. For I have received of the Lord. Now, now he finna tell them, this is what I got from the Lord. This is the way this is supposed to be done. He said, I have received of the Lord what? That which also I delivered unto you. What I delivered unto y'all, that's what I received from the Lord. This is the way this is supposed to be done. Read it, son. That, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said. He break it and said. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. So, brother, this is what he's doing. He's condemning the way they was coming together, what they was trying to make this into. Paul had to come along and condemn what they was doing and said, now, look, this is what I deliver. This is what I received of the Lord. This is the way this is going to be done. So he condemned what they was trying to do and established it the way it's supposed to be done in the scripture. And if you notice where he established what he established is the same thing that Jesus had instructed in Mark 14 and the same thing Jesus had instructed in Luke 22. So Paul came along and built on that same foundation what Jesus had already said. All right. All right. Any more questions? Um, yes, sir. Go ahead, my brother. Um, concerning um, commandments. Commandments. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, in Exodus 20, mm -hmm. thou shalt not. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in um, St. John um, 14, 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. Is it the same? Is that the same commandment? In more, in, uh, when Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments? Yes. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because the commandments you read in Exodus 20, when Jesus came along, through the apostles and established commandments, he did not include all those commandments that's in Exodus 20. He didn't include all of them because all those commandments in Exodus 20 was given under the law. And when it came down, Jesus came here, he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law. So all those commandments, let's go to Exodus 20 first, Brayton. I want you to start at verse 8. And then we're going to come to the New Testament, brother, and I'm going to show you all those commandments when they're going to ask, when, when Jesus, when, well, when Paul going to talk about the commandments, all the ones we're about to read in Exodus 20 is not going to be mentioned. Let me show you. Uh, Exodus 20, son, start at verse number eight. Let's get the commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Start at verse, uh, um, start at verse seven, Brace. What is that? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Read it. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Read it, son. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Read it. Six days thou shalt, sh six days shall thou work, thou Read labor, it. and mm -hmm. do all thy work. Read it. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In it thou shalt not do any work. Read it. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid, manservant, nor thy maidservant, 
Read it, sir. Nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Read it. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Read it. And rested the seventh day. He rested the what day? The seventh day. Read it. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Read it. Honor thy father and thy mother. Read it. That thy, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now look, one of the one of those commandments we just read was the Sabbath day. That's one of them. Okay. Now continue to read, Bryce. Thou shalt not kill. Read it. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Read it. Thou shalt not steal. Read it. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Read it, son. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Read it. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man manservant, nor his maidservant. Read it, son. Nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Read it. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the okay. trumpet. Okay, all right. So all the commandments have been given. Those are the ones you're referring to, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Now give me Matthew, Bracer, chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. I want you to start reading at verse number 35. Matthew 22, 35. Now watch this, brother. Watch this. What is that? And the husbandman took his servant and beat one and killed another. Matthew 22. And I want you to start reading at verse 35. Matthew 22, 35. What did he say? Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, What? Master, which is the great commandment of the law? Which is the great commandment in the law? In, in the law. What did he say, son? Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Read it. Jesus said unto him, What? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. What? Read it. This is the first and great commandment. Read it. And the second is like unto it. Read it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Read it. On these two commandments. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. On these what? On these two commandments. Where everything is hanging at. Hang all the law and the prophets. On which commandments? On these two commandments. Hang what? All the law and the prophets. On which commandments? On these two commandments. Hanging what? All the law and the prophets. On them two. On these two. Give me Romans 13. Romans 13. Mason, I want you to start reading at verse number nine. Romans 13. And I want you to start reading. At verse number nine. What did it say, son? For this thou shalt not commit adultery. One. Thou shalt not kill. Two. Thou shalt not steal. Three. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Four, thou shalt not covet. Five, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. <laughs> Hit a six. If there be any what? If there be any other commandment. If there be any what? Any other commandment. But in Exodus chapter 20, it gave more, right? Mm -hmm. But the Bible said, if there be any what? Any other commandment. Where is it at? It is briefly comprehended in this saying. What's the saying? Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if there's any other commandment, it's briefly comprehended in this saying. What is the saying? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay, Go ahead, brother. Sir. That's the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Any more questions? Saints, we thank God for y'all. To God be the glory. We thank God for y'all. We're going to let everybody break. We're going to be back in service at 6. It is now 344. We got 2 hours and 15 minutes. 6 o'clock, we're going to come in here. We're going to get some good prayer for about 15 minutes or so. And we're going to get rolling in service. Okay? Lord willing, tonight after service, Right through those doors right there is a, is a pool. We're going to take you out there tonight and baptize. Now, chances are we'll baptize again tomorrow, anybody that don't make it tonight. Uh, but you, you that don't have transportation, right down the strip here where you came in the front lobby, if you walk back there, it's a whole strip of stuff back there within walking distance. Some of y'all have been back there already? There's a lot of stuff back there within walking distance. Because that bus, y'all don't need to move that bus mobile. Let that bus park. It's tight getting back there. Uh, they roped off a place uh, for the bus to park. So let that bus park. It's plenty. You just walk. 
you know, get out there. It's a lot of room, a lot of stuff stripped out there, a whole lot of stores and stuff like that. You can walk. But two hours and 15 minutes, we'll be back in here. Let's come have a good time tonight. I've enjoyed y'all. Glad to get a chance to meet you all for first time. Appreciate the calls, the emails. We certainly thank God for y'all. Until six o'clock, let us all stand. We'll, we'll close out with a prayer. Oh, righteous Father.